Hey traders, in this video we're going to talk about momentum oscillators, different types, how to use them, how to get the most benefit from them in your trading. Stay tuned. Hey traders and investors, very warm welcome to you. Okay, so momentum oscillators, one type of indicator we can use to, believe it or not, identify momentum. But that's quite broad. I want to drill down a little bit further into the types of oscillators we've got, some examples of them, how we can use them, and really when we are best to avoid them and when they really might work with a specific trading strategy we have. Okay, so let's go. Right. We've got a momentum oscillator is pretty much telling us how quickly price is moving. So it's it's almost like without the addressing rate of change yet, it's almost how quickly price moves from one point to another, to another, to another. Okay, and a very broad uh, basic oscillator to get a good understanding of this is to literally plot two moving averages and look at the difference between the two. Moving averages are obviously smoothing out price over a certain period of time. So if you plotted a 20 period or 10 period and 50 period, you'll see how price moves away from the slower moving average and hence how the fast moving average moves away. And the distance between the two, how strong and strong it gets, how quickly it moves away, is going to show the type of momentum, the strength of momentum. Because you think about it, if it was very, very slow and chuggy, then the slower moving average would actually catch up as well. But if it's fast and it's really ripping off into the stratosphere, if we're talking for a long, uh, from a long perspective, it's gonna move away from that moving average. The slow one takes so much time to catch up with it. So that's really, uh, a kind of a price oscillator, it's a simple moving average, one subtracted by another. And actually, it's uh, MACD is derived from that, but ultimately it all comes down to the same kind of thing. It's taking the fast moving average away from the slow moving average, and you get an oscillator that moves around a central zero line. This brings into these two categories we've got. We've got a centered and a banded. MACD, very similar to the price oscillator, except there's a smoothing element on that. There's a moving average of the signal line on top of that. But ultimately, they move, rotate around a zero line because it's the difference between the two moving averages. Often we get you know, markets that are just ripping off and they will extend, 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 and then it will t rotate back. So MACD, ROC is rate of change, similar kind of thing, very useful this. We've done a video on this where we talked about using a two period rate of change as a great short term trading tool to try and identify the trend of the day. That's worth watching. But anyway, the point of these is they're all around a zero line. So we're going to look in a minute about how we can use them. But let's first of all check banded. Banded oscillators are constrained between 100 and minus 100, generally speaking. And we've got what most of us are most uh, aware of is the RSI, the CCI, and the stochastics. These are the ones that most of us use. MACD is quite popular. Um, I find a lot of guys use MACD. I like to use these kind of banded oscillators because of the definitive levels they go to, for me, they f a little bit easier. Is it the right or wrong way to do it? And there isn't a right way or wrong to do anything in trading, guys. They're very, very similar, showing the same kind of things. We're going to look at those in a second of how we can use them. But banded, essentially moving between a plus uh, 100 or minus 100, indicating very definitively if we're in overbought or oversold condition. Because of the way they're calculated in these complex formulas for that, won't go into the formula. It's not as simple as kind of two moving averages, the net of two moving averages. There's a little bit more that goes into it then they are constrained. So you can see overbought, hey, we are in an overbought condition now. Whereas MACD, it's a bit judgmental because you can kind of see, okay, relation to prior price action, but is it overbought? You know, it's just showing it stretched. You know, how is it calculated? So there's two different ways of looking at it. Anyway, the most important thing, guys, is how do we use these things to make some money, okay? Number one, the first thing we can do is to use a divergence. Now a divergence, I've done a whole video on this before, but essentially the way we're looking at divergence is how is price comparative to the oscillator? If the oscillator is in overbought territory, the price is, is price is moving high, the oscillator comes back down, price now doesn't go to overbought territory, but price goes to a new high, we've got divergence, indicating potential momentum. We're going back to this initial point of what we're all looking at here, guys. Momentum, momentum is stalling, momentum is isn't as aggressive. Does it necessarily mean the whole thing's gonna roll over and collapse? 
No, it doesn't. But it just gives us a little bit of a clue and says, hey, you know what? We're not as forceful as we were on that first drive. We're not as aggressive. We're not as strong. Momentum is weaker. Do we use that as part of our training strategy? That's entirely up to you. But it's a very, very useful thing to do when you're looking at oscillators. All right, the other useful thing to do, and one that I use a lot, is filters. Number two, we've talked about filters before, and if you're a subscriber, you probably have checked out this video. If you're not, now's a good time to hit that subscribe button. But filters are a great way of staying out of those trades that you know you don't want to be in. Filters, hey, I don't want to go long when I'm overbought condition. I don't want to go short when I'm oversold condition. Just the basic ideas of how to use these as filters, guys. And you can go as deep as you want with that, or you can just go as loose and as, as I've just mentioned there. They're a very good way of saying, hey, you know what? Momentum is very, very strong. I need to be very careful about following this now because it's gone too far. Or I'm going to use it as a trigger to get long. I want to get long only in oversold condition, whatever it may be. You get the idea. Very, very useful tool. And I recommend uh, that as a very good way of staying out of trades that you really don't want to be in. Or number three, counter trend. So similar to the divergence, we're looking for when we think momentum might start to exhaust itself. Okay, we can use it to, we're going to look at number four in a second, but we can look at when we think, hey, you know what, this thing's just gone on and on and on. It's really momentum. The point to make here, uh, guys, is momentum is different to price increase. Okay, momentum could still decrease, but price could still go higher. Momentum is, again, going back to the part, first part of the video, how quickly price changes its rate of change, not necessarily rate of change, the indicator rate of change, but how quickly price moves comparative to the last print, the last print. That can expand and expand as momentum increases, but however, momentum can decrease and price can still be going higher. So it doesn't necessarily mean just momentum is decreasing that it's a definite short. You just gotta look at it as part of the bigger picture. But you can say to yourself, hey, you know what? Momentum is decreasing a bit now. We're coming up to the second kiss of resistance, whatever it may be. Let me have a look. I've got some divergence. Yes, we've got some counter trend uh, opportunities here. Let me trade it counter trend, identify momentum is weakening and, and playing against the actual ultimate move. All right, number four, the obvious one is to look for momentum, look for the momentum ignition to get on board that drive forward. So we're gonna look for you know, big moves away from oversold conditions matching with price, big sharp moves in MACD, big differences in MACD, you know, first pullbacks, kind of when we set, get a big movement away from the MACD, either fast goes away from the slow and that line gets wide, that first kind of retracement back is it starts to dip a little bit, and maybe if you've got a short time frame, use some kind of banded oscillator on a short time frame, goes into first oversold condition, you've identified momentum on a broad higher time frame, maybe a daily, maybe 120 minute, whatever it may be. You then look at a smaller time frame, you look at your oscillator on a smaller time frame, it's gone oversold, but hey, you know you've got momentum on a higher time frame, bang, there's your long, you're using that time frame analysis, your momentum's on two different time frames to identify an opportunity to hop on the really big momentum, either daily or the 120, whatever it may be but using that smaller as a trigger so guys momentum oscillators very useful tools to have in your trading arsenal recommendation is you just pick one i chuck them all up on a chart and have a look these are all very very similar done a video about uh you know choosing between those before and generally speaking not to uh kind of spoil the video but they're all pretty much the same. They give you the same kind of thing. These are slightly different. And even though they're giving you a very similar kind of uh, output, if you like, um, they it all becomes down to personal preference. And you can actually kind of use these, as I say, on different time frames to get that blended feel of what's going on with momentum on a higher time frame and a lower time frame and use that to really time your entries. But one of the best things, guys, as I say, is the filters. If you don't use them for anything other, uh, don't use them to get into a trade, don't use them as a trading strategy, uh, consider looking at them as filters just to make, just to keep you out of stuff that really you don't want to be in. You know that actually, you know, nine times out of 10, when I'm involved in something that uh, it doesn't match that filter, uh, I end up losing money. And if you can avoid that, that's the best way, that's the easiest kind of quick win to make uh, more profitable trades and increase your account size. All right, guys, thumbs up, lots of kind of stuff. See you next one, take care.